Hello and welcome back to this course of videos on Node.js. In this video we'll be talking about something called streaming, which is a very efficient way of getting data from point A to point B. Now in the previous video um, we used, uh, we had our readme.txt that we read from and writeme.txt that we wrote to. And we used the FS call module and we used the methods called read file and write file. Now, what exactly is happening when you use these methods is the read file method is reading from readme.txt into memory. Now, it waits until memory is completely full. It waits until the, the, the total of readme.txt is all populated in memory and then and only then will the write file method kick in and we will write to writeme.txt. So again, it's in two very distinct stages. You, you fill up the memory, fill it up, fill it up, fill it up, until it's completely full with the whole of readme.txt and then you're writing to writeme.txt. That's what we did in the uh, previous video. Now, with streaming, it works quite differently. We've still got our readme.txt here and we're still writing to our writeme.txt and it's still passing through memory. However, in this case, we're using a different method, still the FS call module, but it's called create read stream. Now what create read stream is going to do is it's going to read from readme.txt in small amounts. This is why they call it a stream. Imagine the little droplets of a stream being read from readme.txt. And then we have something that's called a buffer in memory, uh, which is a small piece of memory. Now, when these little drops have filled up the buffer, um, it is then going to pass it on to writeme.txt. Now, this but and these are called chunks. Uh, these are known as, as chunks. When the buffer is full um, and passing it on, it passes on these chunks. Now, readme.txt could have any number of chunks in there. Uh, for example, let's say it had four chunks in there. So it would be feeding the stream into the buffer, and then once the first chunk, the, the, the buffer is full with the first chunk, it will pass it on immediately while it is still reading the other three chunks uh, from readme.txt. So this is a more efficient way of of uh, working with it because if you think about it, here, here we are, we, we're just writing to a text file, but if this was a client, a browser, which you will see in future videos, it's receiving the first chunk while the, 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 the other chunks are still being transmitted into a memory buffer. So the client actually gets a, a preview of the file. <coughs> it, gets start, it gets to start working on the file a lot quicker because you're breaking it down into these chunks and sending it across this way. So it's a much more efficient way of transmitting data from A to B, like I said, and we will look at it in action in this same video. Okay, so let's look at streaming in action in Node.js. The first thing we need to do is to require the FS core module. Now this FS core module is the same one we utilize for when we use the methods um, write file and read file it's the same module but in this this instance we're using the methods to create a stream so the next thing we're going to do is create a variable and this is going to uh, call the create read stream method on the fs core module and populate it into this my read stream variable now the one mandatory uh, parameter that we have is the path to the text file that we wish to read and that's the same text file as we used in the previous video within the text files folder it uh, is readme.txt so the next piece of code we're going to do is we're going to take this variable my read stream and actually attach a data event to it now this is exactly the same my read stream here, when we ran the create read stream method, we created what's called, what's called a stream, but a stream is actually an event emitter. 
because it, uh, it inherits from the event emitter class. So what an event emitter can do, surprisingly enough, is emit events. Now it's very, very similar to client-side JavaScript where you could have, let's say, a my button reference. If you did document.getElement by ID um, to get a reference to a button and call it my button, you could do my button dot on click. Now that is actually what you've done there is your button is an event emitter, the button's event emitter, and you're doing a click event on that button event emitter. In this case, the event emitter is my read stream, and the event that we're attaching to my read stream is data. Now what the data event is, is what we're saying is every time a chunk of data is read from the text file, by my read stream, um, it will the, the stream will emit um, the data event. So we need to pass a second parameter to this because we need to tell um, the read stream what we want it to do when it emits this data event. So we pass this. The second argument is a function. Again, we're going to use a ES6 arrow function. Now, the parameter that we have to pass into here is chunk. So, this chunk parameter here is every time this data event is emitted, it's going to run this function and it's going to pass the chunk of data that it read as this argument into this uh, callback function. So, the, what we're going to do in this function is we're just going to log out the chunk. And actually, just, just before that, I'm going to console.log uh, new chunk, just so we can see um, the separate chunks as they're being read. So I'm going to run this code. Like I said, it's going to create a read stream and look at this readme.txt. Then every single time this stream, this event emitter, emits the data event, um, so basically every time it reads a, p a chunk of data, it's going to run this function past this chunk of data and we're going to read this with the console.log. So if I just go back to um, my git bash and I run this, uh, so no stream streaming is the name of my file that I'm writing here, and I'm already in the correct folder to run it, so I'm going to run this. So that's interesting. So it's actually created four chunks. It's broken down our file into four chunks. See, one, two, three, four chunks. Um, now, as you can see, this is binary data again, because exactly the same as with the read file and write file, we didn't specify a character encoding. So it read the file as binary. So all I need to do here is just add in my UTF-8, and I run this again, and we can see, oh, sorry, I didn't save. So it's going to save here, I'm going to run this again, and then it reads, uh, now it's read in, still in full chunks, but now it's actually reading the text. So this is the way we can read in streams, uh, which is, as I said before, a more efficient way of reading than I previously showed you, which was all in one shot. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.